Greetings everyone, Mike with Spray Jones and coming to you with a topic of frost lines on a roof. This applies only to spray foam roofing systems in cold weather climates. When you do this, when you spray the foam to the underside of the roof deck and you encapsulate the roof trusses, once it gets cold outside you're going to see stripes on the roof deck. And when I first started out and I did my first roof or two, I had the clients call me up and they were all panicky and they were saying, hey, we're really concerned about this and we're concerned that it didn't work properly. And we knew it was working because they weren't having dripping and condensation problems inside. But how do we explain this phenomenon that's going on the outside where you can see where every single truss lines up? And at the time, I didn't have the big time -y scientific answer for that. I knew in my gut that it had to do with the thermal mass of the wood and that the wood was storing energy, that it was holding it, and that at night somehow it was being released. But I didn't have the exact terminology to explain that to the people. And so in March of 2006, I was serving a term on the Kafka board, the Canadian Urethane Foam Contractors Association, and as such I was required to be out at the AGM in Banff. And the guest speaker for that conference was Dr. John Straub. Now he's North American known because he heads up, he's the director and associate professor of the building engineering group that's based out of uh, University of Waterloo, and he was doing amazing building envelope studies on spray foam insulation non-vented roofs, uh, the, the use of vapor barriers or lack thereof with foam. And when he finished his presentation, he went out to get a coffee in the lobby and I went out and talked to him and he was very generous. He gave me about 10 minutes of his time and I said, you know, Dr. John, I have these roofs and you can see these lines lining up on them in the cold weather and what exactly is going on? It seems to be some sort of stored energy in the mass of the wood and he said you know that's exactly what it is. It's called nighttime emissivity and he said that the roof deck because the, the facing of the studs whether it's on a wall or it's on a roof the facing is not going to be insulated and so it can get warm or get cold and in the daytime it picks up heat and in the nighttime, it has to release it back into outer space. That's the emissivity part. But the frost is only going to develop when the surface area can get below the surrounding air temperature, or what most definitions say is the surrounding dew point. And it's not that there's so much heat flowing through the assembly that it's melting things. It's that there's enough energy released through the stored thermal mass that the frost can't develop. And I finally said, aha, like I've got my answer. I, I know what's going on. And ever since then, I've been able to educate people that have gotten foam insulation done to the underside of the roof. And in fact, I had one individual call me up one time and the guy says, you know, I've had another spray foam company here and he's been back three times already. And he's added, you know, I think they were up to eight, in eight inches of insulation. And he said, you know, we're still seeing, um, lines on the roof and I said well you're going to it doesn't have anything to do with heat loss from the inside it has to do with the thermal mass of the wood and the stored energy and to prove that let's take a look at this test report so here we have a test report uh, by this fellow uh, Mike Lusick night radiative cooling and if you take a look here as I scroll through it there's a lot of information I'm going to provide the link to the PDF report in the description box of this video so you can check it out for yourself but in the second paragraph he's talking about nighttime radiation cooling is very dependent on atmospheric water vapor conditions from cloud cover ambient relative humidity um, skipping down he says however even mild winds can overwhelm the cooling effects of radiation uh, that fruit crops and certain types of seedlings are very vulnerable to this phenomenon making it advantageous to study and avoid strategies uh, like using protective coverings, wind machines, fog generators and so on and so forth. So here is the actual law, the Stefan Boltzmann law 
And if you think I understand that, I don't, but I'm just showing you that this is a very scientific calculation. But coming down here into the radiation cooling part, I want you to see this section right here. This is how a determination of night sky emissivity was made. Right? Although it's slightly dependent on water vapor content, a sky emissivity value of 0.74 is a good approximation. So he's, they're going on in the study and the report to show you that they can calculate how much heat loss there's going to be. Uh, they can give you a clear night example. They can give you an overcast night example. They give you radiation cooling time and the uh, mathematical equations there. But in short, what is happening is the heat is being pulled out of the object into the clear night sky. The clearer the night, the faster and more efficient it is to happen. And once the surface temperature gets below the surrounding air temperature, uh, then you're going to start to have frost developing. And this is why if you park a car in a carport, you don't get frost on the windows and on the vehicle is because the car is being blocked from having the nighttime sky emiss or pull the heat away from it into outer space and therefore it's not going to get below surrounding air temperature and frost is not going to develop even though it's still accessible to sub-zero temperatures. Here's another example of emissivity only this time it's working on a wall and this is very typical. How many times have you heard people say, oh, look at all the heat loss coming out of that wall. And you can see the frost. This is a, uh, a batted garage on a new residence. And you can see where every single stud lines up. You can see where the cross blocking is. You can see where the fiberglass will be. And people say, oh, this is just terrible. You can see all of the, all the lines in there and the, the studs are just flowing heat through. It's just terrible. No, what's going on again? nighttime emissivity. You're seeing the stored energy in the wood. It's allowed frost to develop where there's not much thermal mass. That's where the, the, the plywood sheathing is and the bats are. It took very little time to pull the energy out of that area of the wall, but where the 2x6 or the 2x8 and the cross blocking is, more stored energy, more thermal mass, takes longer to pull the energy out, can't get below uh, surrounding air temperature, can't form frost in these areas. Very typical people say, that's heat loss. Absolutely, there will be heat flow through direct connection. I'm not arguing that, but what I am saying is what you are physically, visually seeing here in the building envelope is not a in to out scenario where there's massive heat loss on the inside of the building envelope. What you're seeing is normal uh, thermal dynamics taking place. Obviously, this subject is not exhausted yet, but it gives you an idea of some of the things that are going on with heat flow, nighttime emissivity, how frost is going to develop, what are the physical conditions for frost to even develop, and what the building envelope is doing or not doing about it. If you like content like this and you've stayed for better than eight minutes into this video, you're a die-hard Spray Jones follower, click subscribe. There's no reason not to at that point. We've got many more interesting videos keeping you up to date, coming out soon, usually once a month. Thanks.